were outstanding uh, tonight. I thought they played really, really hard, and obviously they dominated the glass. Uh, that really was the difference in the game. It's very rarely that you see when a team shoots uh, 36% to 22% uh, from the three that they win. And they did that because of how they dominated in the second half. I thought they played really, really hard. Obviously, Philly Pilikowski is an outstanding player, and he had a monster night tonight. Uh, we couldn't keep them off the glass. Um, there was an area that we were concerned about coming into this game. We understood uh, that they've been the best offensive rebounding team in this league in conference play, and really one of the best offensive rebounding teams in the country. And uh, we didn't do a good job. And all the 50-50 balls uh, in the second half, I mean, really, they offensive rebound the whole game, but all of that stuff in the second half. And we went through you know, a long stretch where we just couldn't put the ball in the basket. So congrats to them. Uh, something we'll learn from. We'll get better. And uh, we look forward to the next questions. Jeff, how, how do you address you know, your team struggles in the front court here? I mean, obviously, you guys are thin and young in there. How do you get better with what you have available? We have to work harder. So, what was the difference uh, in your ability to score in the second half versus the first half? What was Duke doing differently? They switched. They switched everything, and then they really did a great job of using their size and length uh, to contest shots. Um, some of the shots that we were making in the first half and at the start of the second half, uh, we just missed them. We got some good looks. I thought we got a little bit stagnant, you know, really trying to attack the matchup that we did in the first half. But their length, I mean, they're big. You know, you, 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 you read about it when you look, you know, at, at the programs and things like that. And you get out there and you see the size of Whitehead, Mitchell, uh, Filipowski, you know, when Lively comes in, um, those guys can cover a lot of ground and clean up a lot of stuff. Jeff, Jamarius was the only guy on your team with multiple assists today. What did Duke do so well to take away guys like Nelly from moving the basketball recently? They switched every ball screen in the second half. Um, they were in gaps and they used their length. Uh, you know, to really contest shots, and they moved well and kept the side of the paint. Jeff, you, you got so many looks out of the mismatches in the first half, and you're trying to get that. How much of that was the adjustments you said Duke made in the second half, and, and how much of it was you guys just sort of getting away from it a little bit? No, we still went to it. They, they, they just made an adjustment, and they switched everything. They started switching every screen. The first half, we were able to get some stuff, maybe confuse them a little bit with some of our roles, Putting pressure on the rim, we were able to skip it and, and, and make you know some multi-drive, you know, and passes and things like that. In the second half, they just switched. They were in the gaps and they used their length uh, to really bother our shots. And then some of the shots we made in the first half, we, we just didn't make in the second half. But again, give them credit because their length is it's tough shooting over, you know, seven feet, seven feet guys that are long um, and can cover a lot of ground. If you guys have seen a lot of talented big men this year, where did Filipowski's efforts tonight rank as far as you know how other guys attack you guys? Well, I, I don't think he's a big guy. I think he's a tall guy, but I don't think he's a post player. Uh, I think he's just a really good basketball player. And they do a great job of moving him around to different spots. He posts at times. Uh, he drove us. Obviously, he was a monster on the glass. I mean, he's very, very talented. Very, very talented. I knew him. I saw him a lot in high school, uh, but he's gotten so much better since he's been here. And tonight, you know, he was he was the best player on the floor. Jeff, you've been in this building a lot, obviously. When when it was at the end of the first half, and then you got to the twelve in the second half, did you get a sense that you maybe taken the building out of it a little bit? Well, I know this point? building's never out of it. You know, you anticipate a run is coming at some point, um, and you know they made a run. The crowd and the crowd was in it all game. You know, terrific crowd. Um, but when they got going, I think those guys really fed off of it too. You know, it gave them an extra boost to, you know, maybe be a step quicker to get that 50-50 ball or, you know, but I also think they just, you know, kind of knew we can dominate the glass and they just kept just, just relentless. I mean, that was their best offense, just to get it on the rim and then to go get it. Jeff, you gave Nate eight minutes in the first half but just one in the second half. What do you think kind of changed within the game play where he didn't see the floor as much? Yeah, I thought Nate did a terrific job. I thought he did a terrific job. Uh, he made a strong drive in the first half for a finish. He made a drive with a great pass to Guillermo. Um, I, I just thought he did a really good job all night long for us. You know, in the second half, we went with guys that have played well for us all year. 
And uh, unfortunately, we just didn't do a great job in the second half. It's more of a big picture question about the lead. Does it feel like it's a recalibrated? You know, there's no K, the boy is gone. You know, all that's in the top of the league is you, Clemson, Miami. And people are figuring things out here too in Carolina. How do you, as we're kind of in the thick of it in January, how do you view the league overall? Right I think now? our league is really good. I, I think our league is the most disrespected good league in the country. And I hate when, you know, especially people that are doing our games talk like it's not good. You know, we heard that all last year, and all we had was two teams in the Final Four, another team in the uh, Elite Eight. I think our team, uh, I think our league is really good. It may not be as top heavy as it was when I first took the pit job and you had three number one seeds, overall number one seeds in the tournament, but it's a really, really good league. Um, and I wish people would really respect it, you know, across the country like we do as coaches. It's really talented players, really good coaches, great home court environments, great passionate fan bases. Um, and we go out and we win, you know, it's, 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 it, and especially when we get to the tournament, you know, we've proven that year in, year out. So I don't think we're recalibrating. It's different faces. Obviously you don't have the quote unquote legends with coach and with, and with Coach Williams, um, but you have really good coaches that have been in this league and been in coaching for a while, like, you know, Coach Laranaga and Leonard Hamilton. And obviously, Tony is a championship coach. Um, you know, so we have really good coaches, really good players, and uh, I think it's a very good league. All right. All right. Yes, yeah. Players will be available outside.